let's try to create um, a React Native app with, uh, which is a catalog of uh, different dog breeds. Uh, I came up to this idea because I was, I was surfing the web and I was trying to find uh, an API that I could consume to do a sample project, and I, I just found this funny dog.co dog API. And what this API has is it returns a list of uh, dog breeds, and then you can query the API by the breed and get the images of different dogs. So I was like, yeah, let's create a, a simple app uh, just to show the basic usage of React Native. And I just quickly designed this thing. So we're gonna have our homepage with our logo. Uh, we're gonna have our uh, flat list with the items here. And then we'll have, uh, when you click on the item, it'll take you to the dog page, which is gonna have a carousel of images, which is gonna be a horizontal flat list. And the text is gonna be retrieved from Wiki, uh, from the Wikipedia. Um, so yeah, I just did it this quick draft. It's not even a design. It's kind of like a wireframe. Uh, I did a logo and, uh, and I initialized my React Native project. So I already have a, a standard like React Native Innate project. Uh, so I did it here. Um, and let me, let me just, it's, it's, a, it's a very, it's like the starter project. So I have it running here. Uh, if I reload it, it, it just works. So this is what the React Native CLI creates. Let me create a uh, let me let me create a SRC source folder here, and inside the source folder, I am gonna just create a, I'm just gonna create a new folder for components, and another one for and another one for pages. I'm gonna have two pages. My first page is gonna be homepage. .js and the second page is going to be a uh, dog page or whatever it could be a detail page whatever I just called it dog page uh, we'll need react navigation so let me go to to chrome and react navigation to see uh, see a guide on integrating it um, so yeah we just do yarn add react navigation so let me go here I just do this and I do yarn add React Navigation. So it's adding the React Navigation now. If we want to, uh, then we need to add these. Okay. All right. These were installed. Now we add these. I'm just following the, the instructions. Uh, we'll obviously have to install the stack navigator as well, and we'll also have to do this step. So let me just, let's wait till it's done. In the meantime, we can go to Android app build cradle. So let me open it, command P Android app build cradle. We scroll down to scroll down to the dependencies section I just paste it as the documentation indicates whoops whoops yep so build gradle saved it it's still installing here all right just installed now I cd into the iOS folder so cd iOS pod install so it's installing the pod I'm just following the instructions on react navigation page uh, and we are going to be we are going to use stack navigator. So stack navigator stack. Where's the stack navigator here? Create stack navigator. Yeah. So we also have to, uh, we also have to do this. So let me just yarn add stack navigator. All right, pods installed. I CD back to the main folder, yarn add stack because this is what the documentation says. And now we're gonna just initialize the project and initialize the stack and all this. So is it still installing? Yeah, it's still resolving the packages. So basically what we'll have to do is we'll have to go here 
and modify our entry profile, which is the app.js, right? The app.js right now is the default one that was created by React Native, but we won't need this. So I'm just simply going to do this, select all, delete, and that's it. We don't need it. Uh, I have my simulator running, so and I have my Metro Bundler running. I'm just gonna kill the Metro Bundler to make sure that I'll rerun the build. Okay, so I killed the Metro Bundler. I'll have to rerun the build again in a second, but let's first create the navigator. So what I'm gonna do is I need to do create const app navigator, and it's gonna be create stack navigator. Yep, auto import, and it's gonna have two screens, home, because this is how you define the screen in, in and react navigation for details you can always go to the to the documentation i'm just gonna sprint through that export create app container app navigator perfect yeah yep so we have this uh we're gonna have two views uh i haven't imported them yet we need to add a screen property to each of them but i haven't because i haven't exported them from here yet so let me just write the home page real quick. So I go to my home page JS and I import uh, React from React because every com every component that is using JSX, every, every file that's using JSX syntax has to have a, uh, has to have a React import. Uh, it's gonna be const home page, uh, functional component and export default home page perfect here we're gonna just render render oh sorry return return and we do text home perfect we need to import text import text it from react native okay good uh, i'm just gonna copy and paste this here and just rename it so for renaming in uh, Visual Studio Code, you just press F2. So it's not home page, but it's a dog page. So it's automatically renaming it dogs. Yep, dogs. Here we go. And here we want to do a screen and we do home page, right? Auto import from source pages home page. So here we go. And here we want to do a screen dog page. Oh, I forgot to add an import. Bam. Dog page. Perfect. Uh, let me just now run the app. So react native run iOS. We'll start with iOS and we'll switch to Android in a second. So it booted up my simulator because it was already there. Uh, now it's building everything and it's going to run it real quick. All right, I'm reloading it because it had an error. Sometimes it happens that it doesn't load right away, so I have to reload it. All right, so you can see that the home page has been loaded. Obviously, you don't see the dog page because the home page is the first element here and it's the first uh, it's the page that is loaded as a as a first uh, page. Uh, if we if we had a link to the dog page, we'd see the the dog thing. Um, all right, so let's start writing the our home uh, our home page component. Uh, there's one more thing that we'll have to install, uh, and it this this thing is uh, called Axios. Axios is a library of yarn add Axios. So I'm typing yarn at Axios to add the library for handling the remote request, the, uh, the Ajax calls. Uh, so Axios is a library that uh, helps you uh, calling external APIs and, and makes it uh, easier for you to, uh, to pull the data in from the APIs and so on. All right, so uh, let's write our, let's write our, uh, our home components. So, uh, first of all, let's try to write some sort of a, uh, 
some sort of a UI and I think that we also would like to get rid of the uh, header right because our design uh, our design didn't have any header here so we want to get rid of the header then we want to display the image and then we want to do the list so let's let's try to write that real quick okay so how do you get rid of the header uh, it's pretty pretty easy with the react navigation because the header was obviously added by the react navigation so what we can do is if we have a functional component like this one we can do homepage dot navigation options bam 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 header shown false I go back here I reload it and you see there's gonna be no header yeah home is here okay so you also see that home is hidden under the notch so we want to wrap our text with a safe area view so first I have to import it so save Save a review from React Native, and I'm just gonna save a review. Is allowing us to handle the. It allows us to handle the. The notch nicer. Uh, so now, if I do home and reload it here, you see that it has the paddings applied and all that stuff. So it's easy and it's good that uh, it comes with uh, React Native. Uh, all right, so we have our safe review. We have our home. Uh, what do we want to do next? Uh, next, we want to do uh, we want to place our image. Uh, I already have this image. I already extracted this. Uh, so let me just copy and paste it. So I'm gonna create I, uh, I'm gonna create a folder at the same level as I had my source folder. So I'm gonna create a folder called images, and I'm, I'm just gonna copy. I'm just gonna paste the image here. So I have this dog logo PNG, and uh, I'm just gonna include it here instead of the text home. I'm gonna do image. Yep, an image from auto import from React Native source. And I do this. I do source, and for the static images that are locally um, hosted, we do require. And I do the path, so double dot, double dot images. Um, dog logo whoa dog logo logo PNG PNG let's see if it even works yeah perfectly fine it is rendered here um, what we want to do though is uh, we want to make it centered so I'll apply to the parent component I'll apply this style Flex. because this is a quick project I'm not gonna create these styles in a separate file it's easier that way for me for this quick project and obviously if we were doing a bigger project we would have these styles externalized in the in the external files but for now it's fine if we have it if the, if we have them in line so here we go uh, flex one align items align items center and justify content center Okay. Yeah, it's centered here, and obviously this is not what it looks like on the on the uh, screenshot that we had on this on this uh, design that we had. Uh, but we are gonna add the view style for uh, flat list, so uh, it's gonna be aligned properly. So I do view here style. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wrap the image with a view. And this view is gonna be sta uh, flex one, and I'm gonna create another view. View uh, for now is gonna be just text something, and this view is gonna be style flex four. Obviously, I forgot to import view, so I add a view here. View it also it is also coming from React Native, right? So it we had this kind find variable view. Of course, it it couldn't find it because it wasn't imported here. So I imported it, saving, go back here, reload, and here we go. So now it's centered, it's at the top, and now we have the remaining part of the screen is the something uh, text, which is this flex for. Uh, oh well. So now we need to have our flat list. We need to add our flat list, but to display the flat list, we need to have some data, right? 
So I wanted to display uh, the, least, the list of all the dog breeds. Um, so let's go back to our dog API documentation. And let me see the list all breeds API. So to list all breeds, we have to call this API. So API breeds list all. I'm just gonna uh, open it in a new tab. So we, we would receive something like that, right? Uh, you have a sample here. So obviously this is an object with uh, with this with the following structure is an object with the message property and the message property has, is an object with keys. And um, all these keys are um, are the dog breeds. So first, first of all, we need to call this API. So let me go back to my Visual Studio code. And here I'm gonna create um, an API call. So as I said, uh, we're gonna be using Axios. So Axios auto import dot get, because it's a get request that we wanna do. And I'm just gonna copy and paste, uh, hard code this URL for now. Uh, let me just rename the axios. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want axios to be uppercase. I'm going to change it to lowercase. All right. So axios get perfect. Uh, the way it work, the uh, the way axios works, it, it returns a promise. So we can do then finally and catch. Uh, catch is for error for handling the proper response. We want to do then. Uh, so I'm doing then. The then I'm passing the and I'm going to pass an arrow function with the that's going to handle the response. And here I'm gonna do uh, destructure the response object, and it has the data attribute. Uh, then I do that. Oops. And here we go. I can console log the data. Okay. So let me go back here. Let me just press Command D, show the debugger, and if I show the console reload the whole thing if it loads properly here we go runtime is not ready for debugging but uh, this summer we're gonna reload and we're gonna get rid of it but you can see that the response was logged in home page line number seven obviously you can see it here so this is the response the data object has a message property with a lot of different properties which are dogs dog breeds um all right so what is this error let me reload it again yeah it's fine so sometimes it happens and you have to reload and that's it um all right so i don't need this console log so i'm going to create a, uh, a constant const uh, because we would prefer prefer an array um or actually we would pre we would prefer the dog breeds object which is going to be um, a little different to what we have now uh, because uh, right now it's nested, right? So it could be nested, like if you have an Australian Shepherd or um, Norwegian Bund uh, or Boston Bulldog, so English Bulldog and French Bulldog, we, we, we don't want the nested uh, keys. We want them to be, we want to flatten this. Uh, there are utility functions out there that could help us with that, but uh, it's easy and I'm just gonna write it as an as an exercise. So I'm gonna create an empty breeds object. So uh, not an empty. So it's gonna be a breeds object. And this breeds object is gonna be data message, right? Because it's gonna contain the, the response, right? So if we look here, it's gonna simply have this, right? So it's gonna have all the dog breeds, including the ones that are nested. All right, so data message. So now I'm gonna do breed keys. So const breed keys, or breeds I should show, call it, but it could be a little bit misle misleading. So we wanna extract the keys from the object. So I'm gonna do object keys and the keys of the breeds object, right? So breeds object, here we go. So now we have the keys, we have the breeds object, and we have to uh, kind of get somehow, uh, we kind of prepare the, the output object. So let's do const assembled breeds object. And here we go. Okay, what do we need to do next? Uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna iterate over breed keys. Oops, what did I do here? I'm gonna iterate over breed keys, so breed keys. And I'm gonna do map key and a function here. All right, so what's happening here? What am I doing here? 
Okay, so breed keys are gonna be all these, these, Affin Pincher, African, Airedale, Akita, and so on and so on. So it, key is gonna be each of these breeds every time. But if it's gonna have a nested uh, breed, uh, we're gonna have to implement the logic to handle that properly. So let's do that. If we need uh, an if else here. And let's do this. So we know that if you can see here that if there's no sub breeds, let's call them, there's an empty array. So length is zero. If there is a, a sub array, it has a, it has some length, right? At least one. So let's do that. Our object with the breeds is the breeds object. So breeds object, right? Key is the key that we extracted. Length because at this point it's either in a, a zero element array or a longer array. So now we do length. If length is greater than zero, we know the breed has sub breeds, right? Otherwise, it is, this breed has no sub breeds. I'm gonna make it capital no. All right, um, so good. So now what we wanna do if it has sub breeds, we wanna iterate over these, these breeds and we wanna write them to this new object, right? So we're gonna just iterate over like Norwegian, or Boston. So we're gonna create like Boston slash Bulldogs, Boston slash English uh, and uh, Bulldog slash Boston, Boston, Bulldog slash English and Bulldog slash French. Uh, that way we're gonna have um, uh, an object that is easier to iterate and easier to display. So what I want to do is I want to do that. Um, I want to do this. So breeds object of key, right? I want to refer to the sub array, to the array of the sub breeds for each, right? And for each loop, easy. Sub breed. And again, an arrow function. Whoops. An arrow function. And here, here I'm gonna do this. Assemble breeds object, and I wanna define a key. So I wanna do this. Key plus underscore sub breed. Okay? So my object is gonna have a key of, in looking at our example, it's gonna be, for example, uh, Australian Shepherd or Bulldog underscore Boston, right? So this is what we want to do, but it wa we want it to have a value and the value is going to be uh, the same thing, but with, an, with a slash. Uh, we need a slash for, uh, for the API, so it's going to be easier for us to read it this way. So, okay, so do key plus, whoops, slash and plus and sub breed. All right. We got it, right? So now, uh, what do we do if there's no subbreeds? Then it's easy. Uh, assemble breeds object, key, easy, and key, right? Because this is the breed itself, right? The key is the breed, so we're good. Um, so we have our breeds object. Uh, what we want to do is, uh, for now, let's just console log it and let's just make sure that it's properly logged. So, uh, breeds and assembled breeds object. Go back here, go back to Chrome, clear the console, go back to simulator, reload. And let's see what's gonna happen. An error, breeds not, is not defined. Where did we, where did we make an error? Breeds is not defined, it said. Reads is not defined. Oh, here, yeah, silly me. Yeah, just uh, I forgot about the uh, the quote. It's a tag for the console log, right? So we just want to tag it so we know. Okay, all right. So we have the breeds, and you, we we have our object, and you can see that the bulldog is now. These are three separate keys instead of it being a nested object. So good. 
So we have our, our keys now. So it's very nice. It's easy for us to, to navigate on, uh, in it. Uh, what do we need to do next? Well, next thing we want to do is we want to render a flat list, right? So hmm, how to do that? Instead of the something tags, we want to do flat list. Auto import, auto import from React Native gesture handle. I don't want to import it from here. I'm just going to import it from here. Here, right? From React Native, not from gesture handler. Okay, so flat list, and I'm just gonna close it like that. Okay, so the way flat list works is it accepts a couple of parameters. You can obviously look it up on the document in the documentation. But the way flat list works, it accepts the data attribute, and the data attribute is expecting an array, right? Uh, in our case, our assembled breeds is an object, but uh, I forgot to tell you about one thing. Uh, it's an object, uh, and we need to to have an array. But what's more important is we need to have be, we need to have access to that inside uh, inside our render uh, section. And this is obviously not going to be available here uh, because this is an asynchronous API call. So what I'm thinking is we we're gonna uh, add. Um, a state variable uh, using a use state hook, and it's gonna be this. So let me do, uh, let me do a thing like that. Const reads set reads, and it's gonna be use state, and the default state is an empty object. What did I do here? Well, use state is a React React hook, right? It allows you to use state in the functional components. The way it works is you simply uh, the state variable or the variable itself is going to be breed or hook variable. It's going to be called breeds. Uh, we're going to use set breeds as a setter. So it's, when we call set breeds and pass a parameter, it's going to be its value is going to be passed to the it's going to be assigned to the breeds uh, constant in our case. Uh, and um, would be able to refer to the breeds uh, variable everywhere in our render function, and what's more important every time is what's more important is that every time the set breeds is going to be called, uh, it's going to re-render uh, the uh, it's going to re-render the uh, the component. So uh, where do we want to we want to set the state properly? So I don't need this console log, but I need to do set breeds, right? Because we want to set the breeds, and I do assembled breeds object. All right. So we're doing set breeds, assembled breeds object. And I go here and let's see if it's getting rendered properly. So breeds, right. So I'm just, oh, it's an object. So it's not going to render and it also has to be wrapped in a text. So I do text and I'm going to do this. JSON stringify, bam, 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 bam. Breeds. Okay, what I did here is uh, I wrapped the JSON stringify because the text only accepts a string, obviously not an object, which reads is. Uh, so I'm going to stringify it and render it in a text component. You can see even without reloading because it has auto reload at this point, you can see that the object is properly populated and it's properly displayed here, which is great. So what do we need to do now? Uh, I said we need to have a flat list. So in order to have a, a proper flat list, uh, flat list has to accept. Flat list accepts a data property, and this data property is expecting an array. Uh, the array is going to be an object. So object keys reads same thing we did here in line number ten. We did in in our Axios get uh, callback function. We did object dot keys breeds object and we extracted the, the keys of the of this object so and it returns an array object dot keys returns an array so our flat list is now um, we, we now provide uh, our breeds as an as an input array um, okay so well it has the data but it still doesn't know how to render these data uh, this data so now we do render items item sorry and this is another arrow, arrow function. And 
it has to return the render, right? So for now, it's going to be just text. We're going to change it in a bit, but for now, it's going to be just text. And the render item passes a parameter to its callback, an object with an, with an item in it. So we're going to render item here. And let me go to my perfect. It is rendered. You can see it nicely rendered here. It has some warnings. We get, we'll get to that later. But all the breeds are rendered. All the keys are rendered. Um, great. So this is not exactly what we wanted, but it is something, right? Um, what I wanted to, what I said I wanted it to be is I wanted uh, whenever I click on each of the line items, I want it to take me to dog page, right? So, well, a clickable element is a touchable opacity. So I do return touchable opacity. Touchable opacity, auto import from React Native, yep. And inside that, I want to have a text, and the text is going to have not the key because the breeds are like if, if we render the item, it's just the key. But what we want to do is what we really want is we want to print out the value. So with the slash, right? So we want to do breeds of item. Item is the key, breeds is the object uh, that we are using. Sorry, the auto format whenever I save. Um, yeah, so breeds is the object, item is the key of this, uh, each of these keys, and now we are rendering the value, right? Easy. Uh, so if I go back here, you'll see that instead of the underscore that we had before, we have a slash now. Good. But it's still not clickable, nothing happens if we click on it. So I'm going to add an on press to the touchable opacity. That's why we added the touchable opacity here. So on press, we pass a function. And this function simply is going to do this navigation, navigate, dog page. All right. You may ask, how do we know? How do we even call navigation? That's going to be undefined, and you're going to see that right away here. When I click navigation, is not defined. Yes, it is not defined because it's a property that is passed to to each of the routes by the framework, uh, by the navigation framework uh, or library, if we want to call it this way. So it's a property. So we're going to destructure the props. And navigation is one of the props. So if I go back here and I click on the CNG, here we go. We have our second view. So our dogs is here. Good. Perfect. So now we have to work on the layout a little bit before we move on to the next page. So, as I said, I'm fine with uh, with uh, with a layout that is um, that is uh, in line. Uh, but what we need to do here is we need to do a couple of things. First of all, I really don't like this because if we go to Figma, you'll see that it's kind of more to the left, and uh, we also need. A little bit bigger padding spaces here, so like a little bit more spacing here, uh, and we want them to be a little bit bigger as well. So let me go to Visual Studio Code and try to do that. So flex direction uh, will tell that flex usually is uh, top to bottom. Uh, if we say flex direction row, it's going to be for the children. It's going to be left to right. So if I do flat list style and uh, and style, I'm gonna pass flex one. It's gonna make the the flat list take the full screen in terms of width. Um, then each of my touchable opacity, I said I want. Whoops, I said I want. Um, I said I want a little bit of padding, so I'm gonna do style, and I do flex one, padding ten. That's fine. This is just more or less, right? Like, as I said, it's more of a wireframe than a real design. Um, so yeah, you can see it's nicely reloaded. It's aligned to the left. And uh, and when I click on it, it still takes me to the dogs page. So it's good. It's all what we, it's, it's perfectly what we wanted. Okay, so let me go back to Visual Studio Code. So yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, we can make the style of the text like style, uh, font size. Can make it a little bit bigger, like 16. 
Oh, maybe like even like 24. Yeah, 24 is fine. Let's make it 24. All right, so good. Um, so we've done our uh, homepage, uh, which is great. Uh, what we need to do next is we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to uh, retrieve the, the dog breed that the user selected. And let's start with printing it out. Uh, just for now because then we'll just call another API to get the images and then we're gonna call another API to get the images from the Wikipedia right so uh, for now let's just do let's just make it simpler and let's just call the let's just try to display the breed that we clicked so how to pass the information like that right like we need to pass it somehow but we don't know how um, let's pass it through the URL well, it's not the real URL, technically speaking, it's a route, but let's pass it through the route. So I'm gonna pass breed here. And what the breed is, the, the breed that we selected is the one that is in the item variable, basically. So we wanna do breeds item, right? Exactly the same thing that we are rendering here is the breeds, uh, breeds item, right? Uh, okay, so now we are here. How to retrieve this information from inside the? How to retrieve this information from inside of the? Um, uh, from inside of the of the component. Well, the navigation property again. Uh, so I'm destructuring it as a as a property. The navigation has um, a thing called get parameter. So const read equals navigation get param and we do name of the parameter breed why breed because this is the name of the parameter is called breed and we're gonna do breed here so now our breed variable is here so instead of dogs I want to display breed back here often pincher I don't even know if I'm uh, not buttering the name but I think it's this is how you read it often pincher and uh, if I click on another one, if I click on African, yeah, African. So yeah, it is rendering properly. Good. Uh, well, so we are able to, um, to render the, the we, to retrieve the breed selected by the user. Uh, what do we do? want to do next uh, we want to call another API that will allow us to retrieve the images uh, so if I go back to the dog API here and I scroll up and I do by breed uh, you'll see that we can do dogs uh, .co API breed hunt images right uh, I think you pronounce it hund uh, uh, so you you just you just call this API and it returns again an object with a structure of message and then an array an array of images. So let me go back here and let me call the API again. Axios auto import. I don't want to. I don't want it to be uppercase. So rename to lowercase a Axios get. And you know I could be. I could extract this. I should extract this. This part to an external file with a configuration. Um, but let's just copy it and paste. It's going to be easier and quicker for now. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to necessarily focus on all the tiny details in this little, uh, video. So I'm just copying and pasting this. And obviously we want to, we need to re re replace the, the, the breed name with the breed from the parameter. How to do that? First of all, we don't want to use single quotes. We want to use backticks. So this is ES six plus feature uh, and it allows us to do inline strings so we can do something like this and this way we just generate the URL on the fly every time we uh, rerun the function uh, yeah with the functional component so then right then again add an arrow function and again it has data right because it passes the response object and it passes the data. I'm just gonna do this because it's gonna be easier. Console log data. Perfect. Um, let's go here. 
let's open Chrome, React Native Debugger, Simulator, clear the cache here, uh, the, the, the console cache. I click on F and Pincher. Oh, I forgot to reload it probably. Let me clear this again. African. Yep, you can see that there are URLs returned here. And let me copy it and paste it here. And this is what an African dog looks like. Good, perfect. So we have an array. Uh, and again, I said I want to display uh, a flat list of images here with, uh, with the dog images. So let me go back to the Visual Studio code. And uh, well, we need to display a flat list. We have an array, so that's easy. Uh, but um, I said that we previously when we were doing an asynchronous call, we put the we put the, the the values that we wanted to use from the asynchronous call into a into a state variable. So let me introduce a new state variable here. So I'm just gonna do uh, this thing const. Uh, images set images used state yep and it's gonna be an empty array as an initial value okay now I'm going to do set images here and I'm gonna set data dot message what's gonna happen is it's simply going to pass the data message right into that and we're gonna be good with it. Okay. All right. So set images, data message, and that's it. Uh, obviously, uh, we want that to To happen only when the uh, when the component is rendered for the very first time, right? Uh, and if we click on this here, you'll see in the console that it's it keeps kind of calling the S API. We obviously don't want to do this. So what we want to do is we want to use a thing called use effect. Uh, this is another hook, um, and this hook is um, similar. To, um, to the component did mount function in um, in class components. So it uh, let me actually go to the documentation so you could see it right away. I could show it to you. So use effect react docs. Um, yeah, similar component did mount and component did update. And what happens is every time we call the set set images, it updates the component, and uh, we obviously. Uh, uh, and it calls the re-render again and, and again and again. We obviously don't want this. So we want to use the, uh, the use effect, but it's also going to change uh, the components so and reload every time. So in order to prevent that, uh, we can, we can uh, pass a second parameter to, the, to our use effect. And our use effect will render only one time, just like component did mount. Um, I don't see that in the documentation. Yeah, here you go. If you want to run an effect and clean it up only once on mount and unmount, you can pass an empty array as a second argument. And this is exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do empty array here, and we're gonna just take the whole thing from here, cut it and paste it here. All right. Here we obviously cannot display the breed because the breed is now inside this use effect callback. So let's just do some text. Um, and we're gonna set the images here. Uh, well, instead of the text, let me do the same thing I did before. So JSON stringify images, right? This is our state variable now. Let me reload it just to make sure. I click on African, and here we go. We have our images rendered as as a as a stringified JSON. 
Good, perfect. So now we have our images. Um, let's try to work out our UI. So I'm gonna wrap it all with uh, within within a view. Uh, I also want to add this because I like when it is here. And let's do flat list. Flat list from React Native auto import data data easy images because it's already an array. I already showed you that it's already an array. So images perfect. Render item, good. Uh, and again, and render item is a is a function. Item is an arrow function with a property uh, with an object that has a property item that I'm destructuring. And now I'm just gonna build the render item body body function. So return again, just like we did in the first uh, on the first page. And here we do view again and view closing tag. And here we're gonna do image source, and it's a return. Uh, it's a it's an external URL. So in order to to load an uh, an image from an external URL, you pass the object URI item. Okay. I think I did something wrong here. And the thing that I did wrong is that I don't have a closing tag for our flat list. Yes. Okay, so what's happening is uh, my flat list is gonna iterate over the images uh, state variable, uh, which is an array. Uh, the render function is gonna just return a view, uh, an image wrapped in a view, uh, and the image is gonna load an external URL. Let's try and see if it works. View is obviously not defined because I forgot all the imports. So view image, what else? View image, I think that's it. Yeah. So I click on African. Nothing happens. Let me see the console log here. Do we have anything? View is not defined. This is an old thing. Why is it not loading? I don't know yet. Let's see. Uh, let me console log. Oh, maybe not console log. We can debug that, right? So. Let me go here, go to sources. I control command P on, on Mac and control P on Windows. And I do dog page JS and I place a breakpoint inside the render item. If only it works. Click on African. Sometimes the debugger is a little bit sketchy. Yeah, let me place a breakpoint again. Home, African. What is the image? What is the item? Oh yeah, I know why it's not rendering. I forgot about that, totally, sorry. Um, yeah, it is not rendering because if you look up the documentation, documentation will, React Native documentation, it'll clearly say that if you're loading an image from an external, external source, you have to pass the width and a, and a height property. Um, what I want it to be is I want it to be more or less the full width of the phone and height. I, I'm going to do 30% uh, of the screen. So style. For now, let's just to make it simpler width 150 height 150. Perfect. The images are loaded perfectly fine here. So we have all the images loaded nice and clear. Good. Um, very nice. Uh, so let me just work on the styling a little bit because obviously we wanted that to be horizontal. We wanted that to, we obviously don't want it to be hard coded to 150 and 150. So let's play with this a little bit more. Okay. So uh, first of all, I said that I am going to have um uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use almost full width of the of the document react Nat uh, of the viewport uh, react Native comes with a thing called um, dimension dimensions uh, which is a class called like a utility class called uh, dimensions and um, uh, it has a function called get and we can pass uh, what dimensions of what we want to get 
in our case it's going to be a window and it's going to return its width and height so let me do this const i'm scrolling to the very top of the file because uh if i ever use need it anywhere else I, i'll just retrieve it once uh, uh it's returning an object so i'm going to destructure it right away because this is how i want to use it so width height and we do dimensions dimensions auto import get window as i said so now width and height is the full width and full height of the of the document uh of the of the viewport uh phone whatever you want to call it so instead of 150 we're just gonna pass with minus i want to do it minus what uh let me do it minus 20 and height i want to be i want to be it i want it to be height i want it to be times 0 0.3 because i want it to be 30 percent okay perfect so now it still renders uh it still doesn't render horizontally but it still renders nicely um i said horizontal rendering right so horizontal rendering is uh, uh is a property of a flat list so horizontal it is called and we set it to true and if i go to the simulator bam nice and horizontal oh i reloaded it by accident african nice and horizontal flat list all right uh this is good uh i don't want this nasty kind of scroller displayed here so i'm just gonna do show horizontal scroll indicator set to false right and that would be it uh from the very basic properties um yeah another thing that i wanted to do i said in the very beginning is if you look into our ui here it has the the description of the dog right like I said we want to pull it in from the Wikipedia uh, and there is actually a Wikipedia API that, that allows us to do that. So first let's prepare a place where we would display it and let's uh, then focus on the uh, on pulling in the data. So okay, so this is my view with the flat list in it. Um, I'm just going to create another one underneath with a text in it, wiki text. Okay, obviously the return cannot return two views uh, side by side. The only way to do this is to wrap it in a single view. So I'm gonna just wrap it like that. And here we go. So let me see if it's rendering the wiki text. Yeah, it is rendering the wiki text. Okay, I want both of, both of them to be style. Flex one, copy and paste, paste here, style flex one. Okay. And this one also has to be style flex one. Yep, both of them take equal space. Nice. So uh, instead of the wiki decks, we will obviously want to dis uh, want to call the real uh, Wikipedia API, and uh, to not spend time on searching the API, I already prepared the link. We will. Uh, the URL that we're gonna call. So here's the URL. Wikipedia org API blah 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 blah. I'm not gonna go through all these parameters. You can read it up. Uh, what's important here is a search API, and the way I'm searching for it is I'm doing this. SR search. This is the parameter of the API. I'm passing the breed and then percent twenty dog for the URL encoded uh, search query. So every time you click on something, we're gonna search for na 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 dog na 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 space dog na 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 space dog right so the breed dog uh so we are sure that you know because if we search for anything that uh that may have multiple meanings right uh i know australian right like or boxer right it, it boxer can refer to a to a sport like person who's uh a sports person who's doing boxing or it could return refer to a car it could return to a type of an engine. It could re refer to multiple different things. Uh, but if we do space uh, dog, it's kind of obvious that it's referring to uh, to that. So again, we need to do Axios uh, get. We paste this thing. So let me cut that and paste it here. 
right? And obviously, where do we have this? Okay, it's a little bit too long. Okay, and then again, our function, bam, 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 data, and here we do console log desk. Okay, so let me see what the description looks like in our console here. Whoops, sorry. I'm jumping over uh, through the windows, but it's by mistake. Okay, I'm on a home page. I click on African and unhandled promise restriction. Desk is not defined. Obviously, it's not defined uh, because, well, it is not defined because I am supposed to reach display data. Okay, so like this. And we see the response here. So this is the response of our first API call the, with the messages. And this is the second API call. And it returns an object like this. It has a property called query. Query has a property called search. And it has African wild dog and Af uh, other things related to African. Let's do African wild, file, wild dog. So what I'm going to do is, obviously, this, these are search results. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just search, uh, display the description from the first result, so from the zeroth index, and I'm gonna just display the snippet like it's here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is uh, re just remember the, the, the path. So object, so data, query, search of zero, snippet, right? So um, what did we do last time when we wanted to render something that was uh, retrieved through an asynchronous API call? Yes, we created a state variable. So const desk description, yes, yeah, set desk. And now we use state and no initial value. I don't need any initial value. It will be undefined. This is going to be undefined. I'm totally fine with that. Perfect. So instead of doing this, we do set desk. And what, I, what did I say? I said data, whoops, sorry. I said data query search of zero and snippet, right? Set description. Now I'll be able to replace the wiki text with my desk. Going back to the simulator and here we go. Uh, obviously it has HTML and obviously React Native doesn't render HTML out of the box, uh, but we'll address that in a second. First, I wanna make sure that I have a nice and clean display uh, and everything displays the way I want it to display. Then we'll focus on cleaning up the, um, the HTML here, okay? So let's work on the styling a little bit because obviously uh, we have some issues and I also, uh, the scrolling here, it kind of is not natural, like it just scrolls. We want it, uh, we, we would rather make it uh, a snap to interval thing, right? So let me let me uh, do that real quick. So you can see that I made it minus 20, right? I made it minus 20, width minus 20, right? Like when we were defining the width of the image because I want it to be minus 20, so I want it to have a 10 pixel margin here and 10 pixel margin here, okay? So uh, our, let, let me add style here and it's gonna be margin 10, whoops, margin 10. Yeah, now it's centered. Every one of them is, well, they're not centered, but you, you can see that they are like, like this. Um, and we want them to snap. As I said, when we are scrolling, we want them to snap. And thankfully, Flatlist has it out of the box. So snap to interval equal to width. Because we want it to snap every uh, multiplication of width, right? So if the width is, let's say, 200, so it is gonna snap at 200, 400, 600, etc. So let me just do this. You see, it kind of snaps, right? And if I slightly scroll it, it kind of, see, so it snaps. 
good, nice. So we have it snapping. It renders nicely horizontally. Uh, everything looks pretty good. Um, do we want to do, yeah, the text here, it should probably have some padding. So I'm gonna do padding 10 and now it has a nice padding. Um, there's one more thing that I don't like here and this thing is the dog page. Obviously we don't wanna display a header saying dog page, right? Um, how to change it. Uh, so in a similar way, we were hiding the, 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 um, the header uh, we are going to pass the title here. So uh, outside of our component, we do dog page dot navigation options. And we can pass uh, before in home page, we were passing an object. Let me scroll to the very bottom of it. We were passing an object. Uh, here we can pass a function because we need to access the screen props in the navigation. So let me do that. Screen props, an arrow function again, screen or maybe even let me do this navigation, All right? Bam, bam, bam. Title is the property of the navigation options that 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 has it. Uh, so title, and uh, it's gonna be navigation get param breed. Okay. And obviously we want it to auto return, so I'm gonna do this thing. We don't need a semicolon here. And you see that the title is not changed. <laughs> Affin pincher, Affin pincher here, images, nice. There are two more things that we have to do. First, it's the um, this yellow kind of warning that we have here. And if I go to home, uh, even if I reload the home here, you'll see the same warning, virtual light, so let me click on it. Virtual, a virtualized list, missing keys for items, make sure to specify a key or ID property for each item to provide a custom key extractor. Yep, exactly. Um, when you are iterating over something and you're rendering the same thing over and over again in a loop or something in React uh, Native, you have to add a key property or in React in general, you have to add a key property to it. So the engine, the framework knows how to differentiate each of them. It's needed by the internal algorithms of the, of the library. Uh, in case of flat list, we have to add an arrow function, which will tell the flat list component how, how to define the key. And the property that allows us to do that is called key extractor. Key extractor, and we pass a function here. The function has an item and index, right? And we're going to simply return uh, image, sorry, image plus index. Oh, sorry. So here we have our virtualized list, but it's coming from the first page. So let me, I oh know we fixed the home page. So it, look, if we reload it here, no more warning on the home page, but we still have, so it's not image, but it's let's call it dog index. And I'm gonna just copy paste it to not mess with it too much. And here I'm gonna just do key extractor image index. And here we go, Affin Pincher, no warning here, no warning here. Last thing remaining, HTML stripping down these tags. And we could do it with, like we should do it, prop if we wanted to do it properly, we should probably have some bigger library to, to do that, right? Because it's not a trivial task to strip down the HTML. But I'm gonna create that, um, I'm gonna make it the easy way. Uh, so I'm just gonna create a new component, it's gonna be called plain, uh, sorry, am I writing? Plain text JS. The plain text uh, component is going to be a React component. So again, import React from React from React. Uh, it's going to return a text. So import whoops text from React Native, right? And const plain text. Bam 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 bam. Return text. Export default plain text. What we want to do here is we want to render a text. We want to take the text as a property. So property, 
props here const input text equals to props text we could do it we could write it this way but isn't it nicer if we just do this it is right so we don't need this thing so we have our text which is our input text uh, property uh, if there's no input text we just just do if not text so if it, the text is undefined we're gonna return null because we don't want to return anything uh, otherwise we are going to strip it down uh, using a regular expression I know regular expression is not the best way to strip down the HTML tags but for the sake of this video it's the easiest way and we're gonna render it so let me create a const plain text variable oh, constant and I'm just gonna copy the I'm just gonna add the, uh, the regular expression so text replace and I already prepared the regular expression to make it easier uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all the op all the opening and closing tags uh, of HTML and everything that's between them uh, and I'm also going to replace the end quote uh, text to be uh, a, a quote right so oops, sorry so I'm just gonna do this thing let me just get rid of the replace here and I'm just gonna paste it so this this part this bit replaces the HTML so it searches for everything that starts with the uh, less than symbol then takes everything inside until the end uh, greater than and then it replaces with an empty string so stripping down all the HTML tags and other tags and then it takes the quote and replaces with a quote with a single quote and now I render I know it's not ideal uh, but uh, for the sake of this uh, little tiny app it's fine so now I'm rendering re returning the text with the plain text as a parameter inside okay uh, so let me go back to my dog page and my dog page instead of uh, text here I want to use a plain text plain text auto import from our plain text Again, the desk, it, it was, we said that it, it's gonna accept the text property, bam, 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 and I'm gonna pass a desk here. Perfect, let me see if it works. Great, it works, we don't have any HTML anymore. Uh, great, it works really good. So, in short, this is how we create an app. Uh, we used, uh, so if I click on the, on the, um, on a nested uh, on a nested component on a nested breed like Boston Terrier is a breed of dog blah 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 so it, it finds it right um, French Bulldog yeah here we go so it works uh, we have a fully functional mobile app and we could uh, just assemble it and it'll gonna it's gonna work on Android and iOS at the same time uh, so yeah that's our simple app calling external API uh, calling external API using React hooks both for state management as well as for lifecycle management and using React Navigation. Hope you like it.